ADC suspends presidential candidate Dumebi Kachiku and withdraw nomination of alleged APC members as INEC Rex, Serap tells Bahari. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anna Kong. The African Democratic Congress, ADC, has suspended its presidential candidate, Dumebi Kachiku, accusing him of making a false, misguided and defamatory video, among other infractions. The party also considered Kachiku's action as crass, irresponsibility, gross indiscipline and completely unfit for someone who wants to be president of Nigeria. Now, in a statement released to newsmen in Abuja, the party said the decision was taken after an emergency national working committee meeting with, which was held on Friday, September 2. Well, joining us to discuss this is Ezekiel Nyaitok. He is a governorship candidate with the ADC in Akwaibom State and Michael Achimugu, who is a media consultant. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us. Good evening. Great. I start with you, Mr. Nyeto, because you are, of course, uh, a, a party man, and of course, you are holding um, the ticket for the party in your state. It, it's incredible that other political parties are gearing up for campaign season because it's on, from the 28th, everybody will roll out the drums for their campaign. But then your party seems to be at loggerheads with um, its presidential candidates. What exactly is going on here? Um. Again, thanks for having us. And um, if I was not um, in the middle of everything that's going on, I'd be very confused because there's so much disinformation, misinformation, and all sorts of things going on. What ADC is going through is what I would call the challenges of success. You would realize that leading to the the primary of the ADC or the national convention that we had, ADC had 12 um, presidential candidates, you know, and they were not just 12 as per numbers. There were 12 as per quality. And um, we had the likes of um, uh, Professor Kingsley Moralu. We had the likes of um, um, uh, Moye Chukuka. We had the likes of Dumebi Kachiku. And, um, you know, Joy Asaka, these were people, or these are people who, on their own right, have made their marks, you know, on the sands of time with respect to their professional um, um, standings nationally and internationally. And uh, Mr. Dumebi Kachiku um, uh, uh, came up more politically savvy. I, I wouldn't say better, but more politically savvy and got the ticket, it was like, wow, because it was, um, we didn't see this coming. Now, arising from that, there's been a lot of challenges because each of these four people, at least, that I mentioned, not to talk of the others, they had their own followers, they had their own people, and this was the first time that ADC was going through this sort of situation, uh, as opposed to other big parties that are used to, you know, dealing with this. ADC has always moved on its quiet lane, but on a steady lane. Now, that brought a lot of conflicts that we've been trying all along to manage. At the end of the day, there were people that, in my opinion, worked on the vulnerability of um, the new entrants into the party. And that created a friction between the candidate, the, the presidential candidate on one hand, and, and the NWC, headed by the chairman, expectedly. Now, we've been trying to hold this, and it so happened that the presidential candidate believed that at the end of the tenure of the current NWC, they would have a new membership or a new um, NWC um, headed by a new chairman. Uh, so when uh, the NWC extended the tenure, by one extra year, uh, he was incensed. He was, he was like, no, this is an illegality. 
he felt unhappy. And he said, no, this has to be stopped. This must not be allowed to continue. Now, the issue is, is it an illegality or is it something not expedient where he would rather have a, a fresher faith and somebody that could resonate more with him in, in going into the campaigns? He feels that he needs to have all the machineries put in place properly before he takes off his campaign. And you know, people have been seeing others do this or do that without sitting down to understand the current electoral law where you have a minimum of two months before another six months before the election. And to him, the first two months presents him an opportunity to do in-house cleansing and then thereafter, he would now be able to launch a campaign on a pedestal and on a, 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 a tempo that he would be able to sustain. Is it, the job, is it the job of a presidential candidate to do a cleansing for the party? Because it now sounds to me, from what you're saying, that the party is at the whims and caprices of your presidential candidate. Why should no, he be no, wielding that, that much power? Thing. You see, there's got to be a balancing. Without a solid backbone, you cannot launch a sustainable campaign. You can't. You can't. Before, without a solid backbone. But you see, you know, the Bible says all things are lawful, but, probably, but not all things are expedient. It is the wisdom from experience on how to handle this. And the party has not been used to such a thing. So it's, it's a system shock that the party is trying to come into terms with to handle it. Each of the sides has a point. And I can say this because I stand right in the middle. I've been a friend of the national chairman for over almost 30 years on one hand. And I am the person that brought Mr. Kachiko into the party. So I stand between the two of them. I can speak authoritatively about the two of them. Mr. 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 Uh, chairman, um, you know, um, uh, Mr. Nwosu, Mr. Chief Ralph Nwosu, he has a heart for the party. And it's like a baby he's nurtured for 17 years. He wants to see it go right. On the other hand, Mr. Kachiku is a man, he's a go-getter. And he puts his house in order and gets, gets things done before he moves on. So each of them has a point. What we need now is the wisdom to bring the two and say, this is now a marriage. You can have it your way this way or that way. And that politics is a game of compromise, a game of understanding, a game of making, you know, concessions. So that this is where we are right now. So what is being blown really out of proportion, in a sense, is something that we will be able to put together. Each side has a point. Okay. Ms. Achiku does not want the illegality to be perpetuated. But okay. the end of the say is saying, no, it's not an illegality. It's this way. Maybe as we advance in the discussion, we'll be able to see all the sides of the divide. Interesting. Michael, you used to um, be a member of this party. You were working with uh, a presidential aspirant on the platform of the ADC. Now, to understand what, what um, Mr. Nyetok is saying about, you know, some sort of shock or an internal cleansing, again, I ask, um, if this is, I mean, every political party does have a constitution and a modus operandi. Uh, is there anywhere in the party's constitution where it talks about the powers that the presidential candidate will wield in terms of cleansing the party again? Uh, where do you stand on all of this? I know that you no longer are a member of the political party, but then you were there when, um, you know, before the presidential primaries and when, before everything went downhill. Talk to me. Yeah, um, correction. I wasn't a member of the party. I was media consultant to Professor Moyaru okay. until um, the end of June. Um, I do not agree with a few things that uh, Mr. Nyaito has said. First of all, the party keeps banding figures that they had 12 presidential candidates, a pre a aspirant. A presidential aspirant is one who has what their nomination for a uh, reform and expression of interest. How many of the 12 persons they keep talking about actually got those tickets? And um, when he said he referred to um, quality, he ended up mentioning only three or four names himself. 
you know. Um, I, I'm also aware that one of the so-called aspirants also gave them a bounce check, which uh, honestly is even a criminal offense. And I don't think this is something for a political party to keep banding around and be proud of. It's not a bad honor. Secondly, he said that the, the party has never had this kind of situation. They have always peacefully moved on from you know some of these situations. I disagree. Um, the last time out, when the gentleman, uh, Me, uh, Me Lafia Obadiah, was the presidential candidate of the ABC, he also called out the chairman of the party. It ended acrimoniously. The, so there's a pattern here. The national chairman, and you see, I must um, apologize in advance. Everything I say here tonight about the national chairman, I would challenge him to take me to court because he has proven that he's a roadside liar, you know, who thinks himself some political strategist and can deceive everybody. I'm sorry, you know, I, I'm sorry, I won't allow you call the, the chairman a liar on air because he's not here to defend himself. And on what grounds would you be terming him or tagging him a liar? Why? Why would you tag him a liar? Yes, uh, I, I, of course, uh, you are the media. I believe that he'll get a chance to, to speak for himself here, you know. Um, number one, before the primaries in Abiy Okuta, the, the party had issued a communique that all aspirants should not deal financially directly with the uh, delegates and that they should donate instead 10 million naira each to the party to take care of accommodation and transportation. It was on the eve of the primary that Professor Kingsley Mohan found out that that arrangement was not valid. To date, that money has never been refunded, all of the 10 million naira. In fact, the campaign DG to the presidential candidate of the party did tell me not too long ago that they were they refused to give that ten million to the party because they realized that the chairman was going to embezzle that money because he had embezzled a previous thirty three million naira they had given to him for state congresses, you know, and so they made they were allowed to make their own arrangements, you know, separately from the official arrangement. Professor King Lumuha was never communicated such a, a petition. You know, so at the end of the day, everybody became frantic. Personally, uh, on the eve of the election, I spent six million naira, you know, uh, trying to get secure hotel accommodation, which was even quite late, you know, because the others already had pre knowledge and had already dealt with the situation beforehand. Nobody told Professor King Lumuha these things. And very, very importantly, I must let the world know today that two weeks before that primary, the chairman demanded from Professor Kingsley Mohan with a sum of 500 million naira so that he could buy the ticket. Again, I see himself, the again these are allegations me. that we cannot verify. You do not have proof. Do you have proof? Would like to see that proof because I do have proof. anybody can make any claim on TV. The but then again, Mr. Mosu is not here to defend himself. So as far as I'm concerned, these are just mere allegations. Well, you can give it the name appellation that you like. But I will say these things and, like I say, challenge him to take me up if this is not true. So he demanded 500 million of, of, from um, um, the probe. And because Professor King Timuhalo said that it goes against his ethics to buy a ticket, he said, look, why not allow this um, election vote if I do win the, 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 the um, 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 uh, uh, ticket, then I can make an official donation to the party to help the party, you know, into the campaign. But to say I should buy the ticket, I'm not going to do that. And Mr. Omosu did tell me by himself that because Prof refused that, so he decided that because he was going to influence the NWC and qualify the other aspirants. But because of that refusal, that, you know, so would you blame anybody who says that he has sold it to the ISB that after all, just yesterday here on another TV station, the chairman of the party's chairman, that is the chairman of the Kogi State chapter of the ADC, said on national television that the chairman demanded the same thing of Dumebi Kachiku as well. In fact, that he had begun from 2 billion naira and came down to 500 million naira. So even the persons that he, the chairman himself had previously, you know, seemed to be on a good standing with are coming out to say, make the same allegations. Still, still staying with allegations, uh, Mr. Mr. Yaito, of course, Michael, we're going to bring you a clip 
of the presidential candidate of the ADC. And he had a couple of allegations yet again against the chairman of the party. Let's take a listen. I can of this party. My mandate is not negotiable. Is not negotiable, and the mandate of any candidate in this party will not be negotiated. A newspaper I won't mention, a news medium, reached out to me um, sometime last month, asking me that they understand that we are in talks to um, uh, negotiate with a party. And upon investigating, I found out that my party had started the, the same process of trying to negotiate. And I will tell you now what they did. When I was submitting the name of my vice presidential candidates, I had them um, 24 hours to beat the deadline. I sent the name to the party. And on Friday, which was the last day to submit the name, I found out two hours to the deadline that the party was trying to substitute the name of my vice presidential candidate with, so, with the name of another person. When I found out, I called the national chairman to ask why this was being done. And um, he hung up the phone, he had no explanation. So I made clear to the party leadership that they dare not try to substitute that name. Eventually, my vice presidential candidate was forced to pack with some money to people in the party before his name was submitted to INEC. A week later, this same chairman came to me and bended his apologizing and saying that he made a mistake and people misled him. We had a meeting with the NWC here in my office, and in that meeting I said to them that upon my return from my trip, I will announce the campaign council and the name of the campaign DG. I boarded a flight to Dubai that day. As I arrived in Dubai, I saw in the media that the same Rafael Su has announced a campaign DG without consulting me. This campaign DG is the same person he wanted to use as a vice presidential candidate. You will wonder why were they desperate to have a hold on me on the campaign. If you want to sell a candidate, if you have a vice presidential candidate, you can have him pull out at any minute and destroy that candidature. And that was why they wanted to do it that way. Seeing they could not do that, they wanted to hold on to my campaign and force um, a campaign DG on me. And I made it clear to them that that would never happen. So this is what is going on within the party. Uh, I want to make um, very clear to members of the public and to my party faithful. Under my watch as presidential candidate of this party, this party will not enter into any alliance or any trading of the mandate of any member of this party. So those people who are in the habit of doing these deals um, in the party of parties, small parties like mine, mine they should know that within this party, it will never happen. A lot of candidates have reached out to me, pleading with me to protect their mandate, and I am letting them know that their mandate will be protected. Uh, so, Mr. Yeto, uh, I'm sure that uh, you both gentlemen have seen and heard what um, Mr. Kachiku has said. Again, this is another allegation, yet again, on the party's national chairman. And I'm wondering to myself, um, Nigerians are supposed to, well, you're supposedly selling yourself to Nigerians as a different option, something different from what we see in the different, the bigger political parties. But here we are um, dealing with the same kinds of issues that people are trying to get away from. What does this say about the ADC in its entirety? Party chairman um, and, of course, the candidature. You, you see... Um I am contesting election on the platform of the ADC. I have something at stake. So I'm not just coming here as a commentator. And please, my brother, an aspirant is somebody who has indicated in interest to run for an office. That's what it is. Okay? An aspirant is somebody who has indicated interest to run for an office. You become a candidate when you have won the ticket. Before then, you are just an aspirant, somebody who was who, is, who, who aspires to. That's just, that's just what it is. Um, not to talk of when you have approached a party and you have consulted them, but that's not where we are right now. Let me say this, and I want to um, uh, be extremely, um, uh, what's the word, careful, because I, I, I have a stake on where we are today. 
the, the presidential candidate of our party, Mr. Dumebi Kachiko, does not want to condone any act of illegality. He believes that the tenor of the current NWC has come to an end. He believes that. And that anything done to the contrary will be a contravention of the constitution of the party. That is on the one hand. On the second hand, he's gotten information, intel, true or false, that there are moves to sell the party which is the stock in trade of so many parties, especially in smaller parties. And he's living about it, and it's understandable. And to him, he must do everything humanly possible to protect his mandate. That is on his side. On the side of the national chairman, he feels that we've come to a point that the national convention, we had item 18 as uh, the change of button of the current NWC. Unfortunately, that that convention ran up to 3 a.m. And as a result, we could not get to item 18 and have been in the process of getting that change done because the tenor of the current NWC was expiring. So in the process, there is a chairman who says, let's not have a vacuum let us see what can be done and they take a position and a step and there is a presidential candidate who says no that step is an illegality i will not take it let it be done properly because if it is an illegality indeed then whosoever submits any document to INEC, even if INEC accepts those documents there is going to be a situation where anybody can go and on litigation and nullify uh, the possible you know, position of assuming, by the grace of God, he emerges as the winner of the presidential elections. So he's got to make sure that everything that is done is done within the ambit of the law and of the Constitution. And this is only simply responsible and expected of somebody who wants to be a president. So, okay. you see, all these issues of, Mr. Um, the, the, if you, the, there's a way you inadvertently cast aspersion on yourself and your capacity to make choices and decisions. I know that this thing is not a, a, a clear-cut case. I'm not going to stand here and castigate any of these two people because in the next one week or two, I may have either a chairman, a BOT chairman, an elder of the party, or somebody in person of Mr. Moses. So you're saying that you would not call out anybody, because you're talking about illegalities here. There have been allegations of monies exchanging hands, yeah, asking why, for monies why, illegally. Why, why, why there, have, there have been cases I've of people pointing fingers. Um, I mean, just as Michael said, you, uh, your party man you has not, been on TV claiming that monies have been stolen or monies were received by your national chairman, but you're not going to call out that let illegality because you feel that this. because let you think that this. you have a stake. What is the, what's the let what's, me say what's the future of that stake, sir? If it's bells on illegality, I'm just curious. If it does, it's simple. Go to court. Why come on national television to cast aspersions on the presidential candidate that he wants to sell the mandate? Or that the chairman is 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 is, is a fraud. But that's not. I will not do that on a national television. If I have evidence that somebody is a fraud, I take him to EFCC okay. or to court. Okay. On the other hand, I will not come here and say that my presidential candidate does not have the right to protect his mandate and make sure that everything that is done is such that his mandate is protected on the long run. We've got to play down on the speculations. Okay. And if you really think that this thing has gone, why don't you go to court? Okay, let Instead me... Instead of coming to national television to... I understand. It doesn't, it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't sound good. Michael, it, let it me... It sounds like good news, <laughs> but, but not... not um, it yeah. doesn't help anybody. Let's bring Michael into this conversation. Michael, just... To, to, to wrap up this conversation, um, I, I, I'm, I'm getting mis, mixed reactions from Mr. Nyaitu, but he said 
these issues ought to be settled in private. Um, and it's not necessary to bring it to national TV. Um, but then I'm going back to the illegality aspect. I remember having a guest right after the presidential primaries of the ADC. Somebody from the Electoral College of Nigeria did say that it was very embarrassing that monies exchange hands and that whoever emerged to become the candidate was not, did not emerge legally. Well, is that a subject please, for debate? Please, please, just one question. No, no, just no, no, one question. no, 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 like no, I said. No, no, just a question, a little question, a little question. Please help me ask the consultant if he's aware that at the primary, monies change hands. Just a little question. Well, I, I ask the questions here. So, um, Michael, going forward, because again, there seems to be a lot of, you know, allegations and counter allegations, finger pointing, and it seems like nothing really um, will come out of this because, of course, the presidential candidate has said he will protect his mandate. Um, the, the chairman is, I mean, he was on Twitter trolling uh, the presidential candidate. There are people who also seem to be on the side of the chairman. There are people who seem to be on the side of the candidate. A house divided in, against itself, can it stand? Oh, well, um, even the devil has uh, his own followers and adherents. Uh, how life is, nothing wrong with that. Um, I do not envy Mr. Yaito's position. Like he said, he has a stake. But also, he must realize that, you know, um, bad things happen when good people refuse to speak. There are certain issues that it is wrong when you speak on a fence. But I understand, you know, he's a candidate on the platform of the party. When he speaks about dealing with these issues of um, national television, he must also remember that he belongs in a party that the first thing they always do, both the candidate and the party leadership, is rush off either social media or television. We are on Lucas. They bring these issues to us. And so we will make comments where necessary. Yesterday is the first time in my life that I will see the chairman of the party, not state chairman, the national chairman of the party, come on social media, you know, to troll his candidate and even ask uh, us to go and Google the name of the baby, inferring that his candidate is uh, some sort of fraud star. It is wrong, but I'm here honestly to defend the drama because this, this chairman and his party have done a lot of things wrong. And one of the most, you know, I don't know, I, I want to be careful with the words that I use. But you see, to never accept responsibility when they do wrong. And this is a chairman who has invited me to his office twice after that primary. And I've sat down, listened to him, looked him in the eye, and one thing I will stay boldly anywhere is that the man is not an honest person. Okay. Also, it is funny to see a, a candidate of a party taking control of the party. It's, there's so much dictatorship here. There's so, there's so many question marks around the ADC right now. Candidate, you know, we're, we're hoping, yeah, we're hoping that these questions will be answered in no time. And just as Mr. Nyaitok said, let's hope that when you have those meetings behind closed doors, something positive comes out of it. Gentlemen, that's our time. Um, Ezekiel Nyaitok is the governorship candidate of the ADC in Akwaibom State, and Michael Achimogu is a media consultant. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being part of this conversation. Thanks for having us. All right, great. We'll take a quick break, and when we come back, well, Sarah is urging Mr. President uh, to not approve, of course, um, the elect nomination of members of his party as resident electoral commissioners. We'll be right back.